My name is Lisa. Um, the past 10 weeks I had the wonderful opportunity to work in this independent affairs mechanical and engineer lab with Travis Delphonis Lozano as my mentor, researching microbial behavior in nanochannels. So, um, I study particles and biomolecules in nanochannels, and this will help in the future design of lab on a chip devices, pretty much making experiments run faster and more cheaper. This could also revolutionize medicine and forensic identification. With that being said, I have a picture of a glucose meter here. Um, currently, diabetics have to poke their finger and draw blood onto a strip in order to check their glucose levels. What understanding nanofluidus will do is it's aiming to make a chip that's able to be implanted into the diabetic and they'd be able to check their blood glucose levels anytime instantly. So um, the picture on your left is a picture of a glass chip that I work with. Well, typically the chip will go from the microchannel to a nanochannel, then back to a microchannel with two reservoirs attached on the end. Um, a better way to think about it is just pretty much a pipe that gets um, thinner in the middle and then bigger again on the end. Um, and here is a picture of um, a glass channel and water. Um, so typically, when you when you put a channel or sorry, when you put glass in water, um, the glass gains a negative charge, and typically the charge would be negligible. But since we're working on the nanoscale, the charge um, becomes a big force, and it makes an electric double layer, which makes having a um, buffer with the correct pH very very critical when filling particles. So um, what I aimed to do this summer was characterize particle transport and separation in the nanochannel using elect um, electrofield and um, fluorescent microscopy, which helps to rapidly separate particles in nanochannels. Um, right here is a picture of a channel that I work with. We get them fabricated from a company, and pretty much what they are are just silicon with the um, nanochannel etched into it. Okay, so um, I studied microbees. Um, in order to understand how DNA flows in the channel due to the fact that um, microbeads are, have similar characteristics to DNA with their charge and the size. Um, the microbeads that I flew through the channel were 50 um, nanometers. So pretty much what I did was I flew the microbeads through the channel using a TRIS buffer set to a pH of about 8.2 using the electrokinetic flow. The microbeads that I used were tagged with the fluorescent which allowed them to shine once laser was exposed to them. And then um, I count the particles that entered the nanochannel and compare that to um, what was in the microchannel. Um, and right here is a channel that I worked with. Typically, they're about 320 nanometers deep um, in the nanochannel and about 1.1 microns deep in the microchannel with a width of about 184 microns. Um, so, in order to run my experiments, I placed the glass chip on top of the microscope. Um, and attached two electrodes in each of the reservoirs. The electrodes were attached to a high voltage supply. Typically, I worked with about 200 kilovolts. Um, so once I shined the laser onto the channel, uh, fluorescence was uh, exposed out or came out um, into the microscope and onto the camera where I recorded them on the computer and observed the particle flow. So the first thing that I looked at um, when trying to understand more about nanofluidics was the flow rate of fluids in the nanochannel. And as one would assume, the flow in the nanochannel was more faster than the flow in the microchannel. And right here is just a bright field image of the view of the channel that I used. And here is the fluorescent image of the channel with um, particles flowing through it. Okay, um, so another thing that I looked at um, during my course of research was how the particles behaved in the channel without voltage. Um, and one issue that I ran into was the fact that the particles in the nanochannel tended to stick to the wall um, due to electrostatic, electrostatic forces. Um, versus in the microchannel, as you can see here, the particles are more dispersed um, throughout the channel. Um, so I got another channel and I ran some more tests. And the issue with this channel that came across was that at the inner phase, as you can see, the inner phase is a lot more fluorescent uh, versus the rest of the channel. The particles um, in the flow from micro to nano channel, a lot of the particles got stuck in the inner phase, making um, the particle count a little bit off. As you can see, there are more particles in the micro channel versus that of the nano channel. So um, in conclusion, I 
with my um, issues that I ran into this summer were the fact that the um, microbeads, once they enter the nano channel, uh, due to Van der Waal forces and electrostatic forces, the particles would stick to the wall versus swing through, and the interphase, uh, the channels that I worked with, would often trap the particles. Um, for future work, something that I can do is get a different ionic strength buffer, uh, which would allow, or which would help particles not to stick to the walls. Um, I'd like to be able to count particles once they go through and observe the effect that the um, interface has on the particle flow. Um, and in conclusion, I'd like to thank Sumita Pinnathor for allowing me to work in her lab, Travis for being such a great mentor, um, everyone in the Pinnathor lab that allowed me to ask them lots and lots of questions, um, Erica for providing me with this opportunity, and Eureka for funding me this summer. So is there, could you use particles that are not so sensitive to the polarity of the charges? Um, that's why we're, we use a buffer in order to make the charge a little bit more stable, but um, I still encounter problems with some of the charges. Yes. So did you um, alter the concentration of your microbeads that you were running through your channels, and do you think maybe changing the concentration might change how beads, you know, get trapped or don't get trapped? Yeah, um, I actually did. Um, I tried, once I, with one dilution that I had, there were too many particles and I tried diluting it again and then you couldn't see anything. So I pretty much went with the uh, more concentrated solution. Any questions? Okay, great. Thank you, Lisa.